Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Miracle Cordless Vacuum Cleaner. I did receive this vacuum directly from Miracle, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. They're not seeing the video until you see the video. If you're interested in this cordless vacuum cleaner or you want to find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging with the nice grip handle, really easy to carry and haul this around until you can get it set up. Couple of quick tech specs for this particular vacuum, 20 kPa, powerful suction, 40 minute run time, and we have a tangle free turbo brush roller. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up we have our user guide and manual on our S3 series vacuum cleaner. This walks us through everything we need to know from what's included, overview of all the buttons, controls, and features, assembly instructions, specific tech specs, 600 milliliter dust cup capacity if you're wondering about the dust bin size, how to operate and use the vacuum as well as charging it. Here's some additional operating instructions with our beautiful LED display. Crevice tool instructions. I mean, this is very thorough. How to clean different rooms and areas. How to set it on the charging basin stand. Maintenance, tips and tricks, care instructions there. That continues on for a couple of pages. How to clean a clog. Troubleshooting tips and tricks. This is very thorough. So, customer care. This does come with a two-year warranty what's not covered, how to get it serviced. They have their email address and additional contact info on the back side of the guide. Next, we have a sticker showing us how to clean the filter. Toolkit with an Allen wrench, couple of screws, our charger with a barrel connector, lots of accessories here, crevice tool with the brush attachment. We can take that on or off and it just snaps and slides right in place. So if we want to use it, great. If we don't, slide it back. Again, you can remove it. Up to you what you want to do. Nice, flexible extension here. Look at that. That's awesome. Got the nice extension. Our duster. This is really nice. If you're going to use the duster, make sure you keep it at an angle across one side so it can actually suck stuff in. If you don't, you're just going to move the dust around, right? So give it that little angle. Nice back and forth movement and motion when you're using this attachment. We got the main tube and body right here. Great, nice metal construction. Extra filter. Got a mini roller brush. Looks great. Lint-free brush 1.0 we can unlock it to clean and detangle as needed for proper maintenance and care. But look at that. Awesome. We have one battery included and this is removable, which is always nice. It's not fully integrated. There's the charging port. If you want to plug the adapter directly in to the battery, you can do that. Next, we have our turbo brush roller right here. This is the tangle free design. We'll be sure to test that out. It's the tidy roll brush as they call it. Look at how nice that is. We have our lock and unlock right here to easily pull this back and remove. Built in LED lights, two nice rubber wheels. And look at the ability to really pivot this as we're cleaning to the left and to the right. Next, we have our charging base. We have to insert the top piece right here. We got our charging contacts and where we're going to plug that in. Just made out of nice molded plastic. And what's really cool is the attention to detail here. So here's where you put all the different accessories. So they have everything labeled for you. The images on top of those circles for easy mounting. And then lastly, we have the vacuum head. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. Looking at the top of the vacuum, you'll notice we have a switch right here to adjust the suction setting and power, so plus and minus button. We also have a filter up top we can twist to pull to remove. You can wash and clean and replace as needed. Then just gently press it back in place, twist it the opposite direction, and now it's back on and sealed. We also have a dust cup release button right here. So you gotta press and then twist it counterclockwise and then it slides and pulls out. And then repeat that in reverse order 
to have everything back on in place like so backside we got our handle power button our built-in display to look just like the image right here in the user guide on the side pay attention no trigger or anything like that on the handle here's a look at the dustbin looking at the other side we have our max line letting us know when everything is full Looking at it from the front, we have our dustbin release right here. So you can just press that to easily dump as needed. Got our filters inside to clean, replace, snaps shut. Very bottom look. We have our battery attachments just going to slide right in. And you may notice we have a nice little registration card for the vacuum showing you what it's capable of cleaning. Carpet, curtains, sofas, floor, and it's got anti tangle technology now let's go ahead let's get this vacuum set up first thing we're going to do with our vacuum to install it is to add and attach the battery it's only going to fit one way and slide right in like you see there let's line it up this way and pay attention on the battery itself we actually have indicator lights for its charging status then just slide it right in we now have the battery installed next up let's add our main tube right here so it's only going to fit one way as well, and then it just snaps right in place. So there we go. We have the main tube installed. So now we just have to pick and choose our accessory and attachment. We have so many different options. We could use the crevice tool if we wanted. We can easily remove that. We want to use the duster. You get the idea. Press the big red button. Maybe we want to use the nice mini brush roller. Snap that in place. There you go. Or we want to use the main brush roller. We'll snap that in and now we have our vacuum fully set up. I mean, look at that. Not too heavy either. What you can expect, I mean, the battery is gonna be the heaviest part of a vacuum like this. But now that we have it all set up, let's go ahead, let's power it on and test out the lights here in the studio. All right, the studio lights are turned off. Let's go ahead, let's power on the vacuum. You'll see the LED lights come on automatically right here, illuminating our path. So if you're in a dim or a dark environment, you'll be able to see in front of you. Here's the remote, right? They're bright. Check those out. Not bad at all. The last thing we have to set up with our vacuum cleaner is the two-in-one -one charging base and stand. All of the tools are provided for you. We have these two pieces here. You can follow the instructions, but we're gonna insert it just like that. Flip it over to the bottom side. We'll have four screw holes right here, and they provide the four screws for you, as you see right here in my hand. They're very small, and they also provide you with the Allen wrench that's needed to fasten them in place. So go ahead, flip this over, drop the four screws in, and tighten everything down. There we go, all four screws tightened down, everything's fastened in place. We now have the stand assembled so we can plug in our charger directly to the stand to easily and conveniently charge the vacuum while it's standing up and we can populate the built-in storage with all of the accessories for our vacuum. Here's a look at the stand all set up. It's plugged in, it's charging our vacuum right now. The vacuum is standing on its own. The stand is stable enough for that and we have all of our accessories stored right here. I do wish they had a spot for the extra filter and even that Allen wrench to keep directly on the base, but this is really nice and we do have an extra spot here in the future if we ever got like another accessory or wanted to reposition, we have some flexibility with how we want to arrange and organize everything. Now it's time to vacuum.
So we just finished our first clean with the vacuum. Let's check out the results. Looking at the main brush roller, here we go. We got some crumbs and some dust building up on it as you would expect. But looking at the brush roller itself, we only have a couple of human hairs right here in the middle and a couple on the side. That's very normal. I'd say it's fairly tangle free, but you will have to do proper maintenance every once in a while. Make sure you're checking on this, flipping it upside down, looking at it, popping this out and occasionally removing any sort of hair that may get built up right there along the sides or maybe the center like us on the main brush roller. And now for the contents of our dustbin, look at this. We hit the max level right there. Tons of pet hair, dirt, dust, and debris. Let's go ahead, let's pop it open and let's dump everything out. Oh, it's so gross. Look at this, disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. So importantly, we still have a couple of pieces of crumbs and dirt and dust residue in here. Due to the high quality filtration, that's what you want to see. You don't want any of those really fine dirt and dust particles exhausting out the vacuum and just being spread to another room. So obviously it can pick up large objects, pet hair and human hair like you see right here. But look at the really fine dirt and dust crumbs. We got some Christmas tree clippings right there. So you get the idea, a wide variety and range of household contents, dirt, dust, and debris that's going to be able to pick up around your house. Now let's go ahead, let's continue testing out this vacuum. So this vacuum's advertised at 20 kPa. We're always going to give the brand the benefit of the doubt because we don't have the most professional tools that they will be using in their factory, etc. But we're still going to test it out here to see what we're able to get. We'll try all three suction settings. Obviously, the lowest suction setting will give you that 40 minute battery life. And then every additional suction setting is going to consume more and more battery. So you'll see drastically less runtime with your vacuum. Let's power it up, though. Let's see what our first result is. We're getting a little bit less than 10. KPA for our second suction setting. A little bit more than 15 KPA. And now our third and final suction setting. We're showing a little bit more than 20 KPA. We got right around 21, 22 KPA, so well within range. In fact, we're actually exceeding what they advertise a little bit. Now let's throw a couple more tests at this cordless vacuum cleaner, putting it through a few different scenarios on both hard floors and surfaces and carpet.
at this cordless vacuum cleaner did a great job. I'm most impressed with its ability to pick up the Cheerios on the hard floors and surfaces. So if you have any large objects you're trying to vacuum up like that, you'll be impressed with this brush head. Due to its design, it's able to not just push them, right? A lot of vacuums don't actually suck them up. They just push them along and out of the way. Or a lot of times they'll get stuck under here, but they won't get sucked up. That's not the case with this cordless vacuum cleaner, but there is one catch to that being so successful due to this design where they're able to get up and under. It's not as good on carpets picking up the really fine sand. Most vacuums aren't, but in this case, I'd say it was just average from the other cordless vacuums that I've experienced due to it being so successful getting the larger objects, it's not creating the best suction seal possible for the really fine dirt, dust, and sand in your carpets. But pet hair, large crumbs, medium-sized crumbs, even the sand and the dirt, you could see we were able to vacuum most of it out, but it just leaves a smidge behind. And again, that's a tough test on any vacuum. But overall, I'm impressed with what this vacuum's capable of doing. I've reviewed a lot of other vacuum cleaners that cost way more, hundreds of dollars more, and they're not as capable on hard floors getting those larger or mid-size objects. And they perform usually just the same on carpets. But I definitely recommend if you're using this vacuum cleaner for carpets, have it on the highest suction setting so you can make sure you're lifting everything out. If you just want to skim the carpets for pet hair, things like that, that's fine. Use the lower suction setting and appreciate having better battery life.